I'll stand for it. Be seated for resumption of tank. This week, accompanied by the Hearts of Iron 2 soundtrack on shuffle. I used the Hearts 4 soundtrack, but the only like shuffleable playlist of that I found laying all around had the Allied radio music DLC in it. And Ugh, those songs. Anyway, Tank. Previously, uh... Bunch of wheels those got made and came together pretty nicely. All road wheels are still freely rotating. Successfully prevented any of them from fusing with their axles, so... Those will all be well and good. Also created the, uh, the two idler wheels and drive sprockets that sit at the uh, front and end of the respective treads. There was a part inside of these that I was supposed to not adhere to anything, but I did. I did a little bit of looking around at the rest of the instructions and confirmed with my suspicion, which I don't think I voiced during the previous video, that uh, the little free-moving bit is intended to like fit tightly onto a peg on the chassis and serve as kind of a, you know, little tiny plastic bearing to allow the these to rotate a bit more freely while still having a firm grip on the model. And the difference isn't too bad. It's, you end up with a firm but capable little bit of motion on these. And these kind of barely grip too firmly at all. I think they're mostly going to be held in place by the tread itself once the tread is in place. So, overall, that's not much to worry about, so those wheels will get to sit comfortably off to the side and not be fiddled with until such time as they're ready to be attached. We prepared the 75mm gun, which is also successfully not fused with the walls of its sponson. Sponson. Got the primary weapon there. There's a bit of gunk and film that came on from just, uh excess cement when I went and poured a blob in there for the hole that the gun itself is fused into. A bit of overflow there caused a bit of, you know, texturing and... Ugh, unpleasantness residue on the surface of that after being dabbed off. That'll be fine though. That comes out in sanding and redecorating, so this is looking well the road wheel that snuck past my attempts to throw them back, and we prepared this rear plate here, which is solidified well, just the exhaust, a couple of hooks for attaching things on. Not that anything will attach to those on miniature scale, but that's why you'd like put ropes and chains and so forth if you had to have this tow things. Probably one of its better jobs. Also, field barber shop, probably a decent application of the lead. Yes. Well spotted. So today, let's go ahead and build some more things. Start off with the uh, fenders that I skipped over in order to rush to creating the gun. Then we'll go from there.
So let's see, hunting mostly for parts from the bee sprue. Clippers out of their sheath. Alright, tell me what I'm after. Wow, this is just a very quiet room. Also, fine poster over there. I'm, I'm glad that someone has established a pipeline for quickly generating edited World War posters. It is a fine creative medium. Alright, so let's see. Or actually, it's mostly the small fiddly bits off the B sprue and the plates I'm working with are off the A sprue. Let's go ahead and grab plate A9 and A8. On Having a pre-made stockpile edited World War posters is also a fine thing. Your vigilance and preparedness will bring victory over, you know, things. Things that we're fighting for freedom and peace. Oh man, there's, a, there's just a shovel in here. Fine entrenching tool. Actually, now that I look at it, maybe, maybe this loop of rope here is actually meant to hook into any of our tiny appropriate attachment points elsewhere on the vehicle. Strong possibility. Could uh, start with you know, a more elaborate pen. For which we just have a few bits of, uh, you know, hooks. Uh, hooks and lines and jags. Lamp number 17 belongs here. Other lamp would be for you. Any tiny pieces to sort out. Of Items sixteen, seventeen, and thirty. inner components here, the delicate bits. Good, I wasn't paying attention, I managed to snip one side off of each of these identical parts instead of both sides off one of them. Now I have immediately visually lost track of where that ended up. You go and launch yourself somewhere. Hold an adventurous part. Oh. The hunt resumes.
resumes and not begins because the hunt for adventurous stray plastic is always ongoing. Entirely normal to find things that you never even knew you lost. Put it again. I didn't know that it could have flung itself quite a ways. For now, I do have two. We'll see if the other one leaps back out of hiding at some point. For now, this one surely will not escape. Oh, there it is. Camouflage. Clever. Inside the color scheme of the plate it's intended to attach to. Devious. Clever screws. And they're both getting used, just one on each plate, and they're identical, so... Confusion that saves time. Just retroactively not a mistake. Nearly done collecting parts for this first. Of which the final piece is a handsome set of wire cutters. Old cutters, even by the size those would end up being. But, you know, for cutting heavy wire. Probably. Common tanking obstacle. Well, the other plate just has that loop and the other lamp. Go ahead and cut that now. Then we go about cleaning and building these sections. This part's been cutting out very cleanly. Either I've gotten better at snipping, or well, that in some combination of the sprue probably being a little nicer about how it's connected to these things. In particular, a lot of these parts are very thin. Able to like proportionally be more thin, because they're 
working at a different scale for the thing they're representing. They have the luxury of not being on quite such a tight schedule with more budget of space, economy of space. They're less constrained, like, just this one fender plate here, that's like, that's as big as, like, a chunk of superstructure would have been on the Prince. small fiddly bits that need to be adhered on they are noticeably larger and similar fiddly bits would have been we have fiddly bits of bolt cutters and shovel and other such wares that are like appropriate and be handled with your fingers size Whereas, like, all of the, all of the tiny guns and all of the spotlights on the Prince of Wales were, like, yeah, smaller than this lamp here. Yeah, for the most part, these have come out clean. And for the very thinnest ones, I'd rather not do any scraping on them at all, just to avoid snapping parts. Or they're more comfortably lodged into a framework. Give them legs to stand on. They themselves are legs. Give them ground to stand on. That has a whole bunch of bits that want to attach to it. Just quickly sample and visualize where. Headlight, middle ear facing forward. This fellow is supposed to go down into the four points surrounding that line. See, I'll probably want to apply that after I already have this thing firmly adhered in place. I'm not pulling away from me, friend. That is headphones hitting the floor. That's a perfectly ordinary workplace sound. These things happen. Tiny lamp. Bolt cutters along those two spots there. Then this piece, which looks to be the head of a pickaxe, perhaps? With the body of it embedded in deeper in. Sort of internal compartment. Maybe it's just some sort of handle or grip. Whatever it is, it will soon have a home. I'm for Google. 
Thus, also time for stronger ventilation. Expect more intrusive fan noise as the video continues. That's not nearly enough gum. Milk this from the other end. Milk to the destination. There we go. That's getting that immediate contact. That purchase. That bite. That's looking straight from all angles. Well, perhaps leaning a little bit with the ring. At this point, this is much to my benefit as the audience is. I can get a much clearer view when I just pull the piece right up to the camera and just look at the preview. Just wait, it's sufficient funding level, so... Set up some sort of system of robot arms for remote control of bottle building. High-tech surgical implements applied to tiny plastic replicas. Finest in human technology, wasted on pointless garbage. As it should be. These pieces are managing to fall between the envelope of small enough for these tweezers to grip and large enough for the thumb to grip reasonably. You have to fish out some pliers.
that seems to be settling in. It's largely upright. Certainly fit it into its gap. Well, there you will stay. Yep, going to space for you. the sheer variety of particular shapes and sizes and makes and models of tools that people created, you think, that's ridiculous. Now could we ever need that many varieties of slightly different wrench and you start engaging in any project of any sort at all? You encounter each of the use cases wherein, yes, you want precisely that size of wrench, no larger, no smaller. where that one fraction of a millimeter can matter more than anything in the world. Come on, focus in there. Look at that. Look at that fine grip. well-behaved pieces that are laying down exactly where they should. Miscellaneous tools. You can see there the four gaps to which this... I'll focus on that. There you go. Into which that belongs. That at least is a part that should cooperate with tweezers. I will go ahead and apply this with the file. Or very tiny spots. Rounded by other things. Yeah, sponge on a stick is just here. Right, because I have many of them that I acquired while getting painting supplies and so they're going to find use wherever they may, and here it's just as something to rest things covered in adhesive on. Primarily that file. Give it a home. And when it is thoroughly inundated with gunk. Light, please. God help it. This part is here to shield you from debris. Do not interfere with the placement. 
your own protective equipment. Manufacturer is not liable for damage caused as a result of the hubris of the end user. It's settling into its space. It feels a bit, little weird that that's the angle that it is settled in on. If I just creep in closer there, it's weird that that's off center, but the parts are connecting where they should. Yes, does look to be the case. Come on, I'm good. Don't don't think about all that stuff in the background. That's not important. What's important is this. Focus on that. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, a fender. And the other much simpler, just light and appropriate guard. Go this all down just in one pass. It's weird it works like that on the vehicle where we've already accepted the sponsored gun. There's no turning back. Whatever you find, call it a feature. Working as intended. No fixing the M3 Lee. Please direct all complaints regarding the structure of the M3 Lee to the Design Bureau for the M4. They are not going to patch this. Wait for the sequel. Or the DLCs. All the conversion jobs, because although the Lee itself is you know, a very weird and awkward tank, a lot of the underlying structure to it still found use in other vehicles, even other regular tanks, once the appropriate other components existed to lay on top of a Lee chassis. Once there were non-sponsons mount cannons in of the appropriate caliber. And then a bunch of like transport and towing and recovery and Artillery carrying vehicles were built on the Lee as a foundation. Closer look on the camera there. That seems vaguely functional. It means we're already beyond expectations for a lead. M3 lead, close enough. Tank ish. Oh, 
Alright, so with that done... On to constructing the very descriptively named front part. Just another section of the hull. The bulk of which is this nice half barrel here. Yeah, composed entirely of parts from B screw. Couple of twenty threes, couple of thirty sevens. The M3 Lee. This has to ship tomorrow. AAA Weapons Manufacturing, am I right? Leaves me wondering what the Kickstarter project of armored fighting vehicles would be, but the answer to that is the Bob symbol. The stretch goal tank. Crowdfunded fighting machine. Alternatively, kill those. Well, no, I'd call kill those are the you know, the Kickstarter fighting vehicle that succeeds vaguely. That it's a, having some appeal. To it. Well, no, that's I suppose in terms of what actual kill those are. Yeah. More of your you know entertaining train wreck. Take that as open license to discuss the killdozer. Real or fictional killdozer, either will do. Ask only, does it doze? Kill those with the improvised fighting vehicle. Be very careful to maintain awareness of which of these tiny bits is an actual tiny bit for the tank, these ones here, and which one is just a bit of cruff that was left over by like between these two things on the sprue. There was a piece in the middle there. That's this dot over here. This dot. That's just filler material.
the sum total of components for front part. Let front part begin. Well, let front part be cleaned, and then front part begin. Ow, the scraping of front part. The nature of these bits makes them kind of almost self-cleaning. Connected near parts of them that are already supposed to be points for attachment to other segments. They just work. Right, so which side of this is up and which side is down? It's got a slightly asymmetric curve to it, so there is a sidedness. Just need to check what belongs where. Notch here. That notch there belongs at the bottom. Everything else clips in accordingly. These hook on like so. will be adhered down, but right now I'm just observing. Just eyeballing. That bit slips on behind them up above. Biker neighbor rushes by majestically off to whatever mid-afternoon errand demands their time. Whatever grand biker neighbor adventures. Biker groceries, biker dentist appointments. Taking biker children to biker music lessons.
I've never seen the biker neighbors collaborate. I'm not sure if there's any social contact between them. They are co-bikers, or perhaps biker rivals. To the best of my knowledge, each is a lone biker neighbor. Mounting points for the hooks, those will want quite a bit of time to dry, set, and cure. We'll get them in early and try to leave them largely undisturbed while we work the other pieces. Some weeks I consider not putting down like three cups of coffee before starting all the fine precise motor work and building miniature things. This is not one of them. Shadow of Coffee Four. Right, and then all that's left is that this little plate here slides in under right up here. A bit of overhang where these bits hook out. This plate attaches under those. It has helpful notches for exactly that purpose. It's also another piece that's asymmetric. It has a sightedness to it.
plates it. I'd consider further adhering this plate to the other plate, just to create one big continuous seal all the way through there, remove that gap. That would seem off-theme for the Lee, trying to make sure that the hull is very robustly connected together and not instead prone to explode into shrapnel with the faintest touch. This is for historical accuracy. I want to be genuine. No, aside from making sure that the uh, little hooks go onto their appropriate mounts, that's front plate done. Let you down and let you dry. And up next is actually throwing a bunch of those onto the chassis. Our lead will have legs. So to that end, since I'm still waiting for all of those to settle down. Let's grab some road wheels and get them thrown onto the sides of this thing. That is a deliciously perforated lee. It's like a scratching post. Just that one wall that a pet decides is the most fascinating thing in the world. Three years later, after it's been thoroughly torn from every possible angle. The old couch that's been exposed to birds for too long. Alright, so road wheels, three on a side, go into those little fellows there. And then up here, drive sprocket is going to sit back here, idler wheel. And once that is done, the various plates that we've just built are going to snap on to the front and the back. And uh, one of the fenders mounts on up here at this point. The other, I think, attaches yeah to the upper hull instead because it links into where the sponson's mounted. Let's see about getting a trio of those fused into place. Come on, don't be wiggling on me, road wheel. There's no tolerance in the spec for wiggling. Unless you're the suspension, then that's by design you wiggle. Wiggling's what you're for. You prevent wiggling everywhere else. All non-suspension wiggling will be firmly punished. Ah, somebody didn't winterize their Lee. I remember to use your snow treads.
Always be aware of the minimum thickness of ice, which is safe to traverse with your armored fighting vehicle. Always be sure of the minimum thickness of bridge, which is safe to traverse with your armored fighting vehicle. Also, under no circumstances, anger your combat engineers. Do not attempt to prank them. They will prank you back. Engineering pranks. It's a prank bridge. Relax. Right, there's a side of wheels. And let's see, I could tentatively shove a sprocket on there for rest in place. And shove an idler. Back. The idlers might need a bit of working with, and they have to, like, kind of stab a file in there and hollow them out a bit harder. I want to be sure they actually, like, line up properly with the rest of the drive. They fit very loosely, though. They're, if they hold at all, they're going to be held in place almost entirely by just the tension on the tread. It very comfortably though, so I feel confident spinning this thing around and getting started on the other side. Lee, please. I showed faith in you, Lee. Wait at least a few minutes before betraying it. Yeah, stop a moment to check on the old mission timer. It, it, it's in that direction for me. Only an hour in, and look! Our Lee has legs! You can walk. You can roll. Yeah, if I end up dissatisfied with the uh, level of mobility on those, I'll probably make an attempt to carve them open and do some surgery. See if we can recover some flexibility. But yeah, look at that. Look at that healthy set of road wheels.
firmly in place, resting vaguely level. Roadworthy lead. High praise for such a vehicle. And let's see, I can throw the rear plate on right away. Was... It's an internally. Hmm. East the demands bending of things. To go snap tight on me, Lee. Vaguely roadworthy. High praise. This is the most dangerous vehicle we have ever encountered in our campaign. Deadly challenge I've encountered in this, how do I... How do I get you to cooperate and slide into the notches where you belong? There you can see those two little holes there. Those correspond. Little tabs on the side of this. However, this piece is fitted to be exactly the right width for that. And these fellows for the idler wheels. They box it in. Geometries at work. Allegedly from above, spreading the sides slightly. If I can get this to fall into place, I may just have to trust it to largely fall. Well, no, once I have it in there, I can probably just throw a bit of adhesive onto the seams. Oh, there's, there's an end that's maybe cooperating. Maybe. Maybe. Come on. Come on, find your home. This is your destiny. You were, you were made to be here. That is your hole. You are an M3 Lee. Almost. Almost. Come on. Come on, Lee. There. It did comfortably. Ish. And since this is part of the main hall, I'm gonna go ahead and throw down some load bearing glue. You aren't going anywhere. 
Rear plate, you live here now. Rear plate is dead. There is only Lee. Thrown on, nothing's oozing through. We'll just serve to fill gaps. Hey Lee. In progress. At this point, the design, we have a fairly serviceable wheel boat. A fine war canoe. Now, all the other plates demand as much strong arming as that. One of the two sprockets here definitely ended up more gummed up than the other. I'll have to give it a cleaning. Road wheels, though, those are fine. As long as you want to tow or get out and push the lead, it'll work great. Engine? Next month. You wanted a working engine, you should have asked for the premium version. Red front plate, that's how you grip. Much more conventional, without the aid of any particular bells or whistles. In fact, it just completely smoothly fits over this indent here, so I can just... can just administer adhesive all over this segment. Then nature will take its course. I should probably go with a rag of some sort, a supply of disposable rags for dealing with excessive goo. Or just allowing it to dry into place and then sanding it off later. Keeps adding texture to the design. Battle damage. Been worn down by use, it's immersive. And the left fender is on the edge. That just notches into place. be a little rude though because that that's just hanging on there by a thread it doesn't have anything it doesn't have any like, kind of platform to lay on or that connection it's just there 
that may require some degree of tape support. Sitting around or being stuck on things sounds like the two most common situations that Ali was in. I would expect an abundance of photos covering that subject. Lee in battle, what do you think this is, a tank? for whatever attempt will be made to secure this more firmly. It's actually sitting pretty nicely just off of the uh, off the friction of the adhesive. That initial bond is holding up well. Still gonna throw some strips on there to secure it better. It is vital. I was expecting just from looking at it. Just the one will do. Be sure that stays at a healthy upward angle. Getting like the tiniest bit of a... Bit of a dip, just like a degree. And I'd like to keep that space as free and clear as possible since that's where the tread will be running. Time to throw that into place. Hey, look at that. A chassis. Throw the two of these right inside of the vehicle. Helpful storage container on wheels. The M3 lead. We move on to another portion. Oddly enough, this fender will not be directly involved in that. It gets attached to the upper hull and then joins down when the rest of that seals into place. In this upper hull, which we now get to start working with, I'm to attach many objects to the upper hull. After a brief reviewing of documents and beverages, let work begin on the upper hull. There are a lot of parts to throw onto this. 
look closely at the upper hull and see that it's just positively already, you know, very firmly dotted with all sorts of little attachment points. Trying to sort out what's a good order to pursue them soon. Got some hatches I could throw on to some blank points. Here, that upper port. One that's for the side with the gunner. Presumably, the gunner is standing here. Uh, well, he kind of has two hatches to work with. Either of those could be for the gunner. Maybe another is for someone else who has to stand very close to the gunner. Maybe the hatches are just considered the collective property of all members of the crew. Can't own a hatch. Hatches are for everyone. sizable plate here that slides onto the back. Yes, of course, the Christmas League. The uh, plate that shields the front of the sponson. That grips on there firmly, and then the gun, as we've already said, with it just lives behind there. Resting freely on the various perforations that exist for it. It seems to be the uh, pressure, some sort of storage space there. Maybe part of how they get at the engine. There's hatches that serve that purpose. Miscellaneous piece. There. Latches onto that. And then I start descending down into many more tiny bits that you don't leave attached to the sprue until they're necessary, just in order to, you know, minimize clutter, avoid going too far off the deep end, you know, stay in the medium end. Inter end, the end between ends. No, oh. in some bits. I suppose, am I supposed to remove these little fellows on the back as well? Are they superfluous, or are they part of how the, uh, the hatch is implemented? I 
Ah, uh, yeah, it looks like they are also a sprue that has to die. Okay, I'm closer on this, uh, this side here. There's detailing. That's where the, well, cosmetically, where the hinges are on this. None of these hatches are meant to open on the model as it's completed. Frame these strange, superfluous knobs. the haphazard whimsical construction of the Lee makes it ideally suited to deliver joy to children. M for merriment. Armored Friendship Vehicle. There we go, match. Into place, sealed shut forever, so that the crew member who relies on you to provide a means of swift egress in the event of a crisis will instead be forever entombed within the Lee. Do good work, Hatch. You do what you should. Right, Cash. Uh, let's see, is that pretty well fitted? It's gonna be gunked as hell, but there. I'll need all sorts of gunk management. I'll leave the side hatch off until after I'm done with the gun, since then this gap gives me a way to like, physically... Oh wait, no, there's a plate behind there, at least in the model. I was, I was expecting that might be hollow space that I could then you know, hook in and rip the gun better while I'm installing it, but not the case. Very well, Hatch. This is your destiny. The next wave of supplies to procure. Definitely gonna look into a proper applicator. The adhesives. Hatch. Hatch, calm down. Get fancy, Hatch. Job is simple. And is clear. Lay on the hull, Hatch. That's where you go. 
Get down and rest. And there it is. Another gap in the armor closed. In anticipation of creating many more. This way. Cover that whole section. Do all one for one. Just a case of we didn't want to put that layer. Well, I suppose, yeah, there's other detail would be overlapping. They tried to make the mold more elaborate on that front. Fine. Segment appended. Bolt on more plates. Wait's good for the tank. Builds character. Alright, that's what started me off on the perspective. It hangs over this angled section. So that the eventual... yeah, there we go. Once it settles in, it looks flat. And then it's just this little utility box here. Need to dig in there, and then this bit mounts on top of it. Have those two points that you use to hook in alongside a sizable area of contact. Thorough, but not too thorough. Just right for the lead. Historically accurate corner cutting. Historically accurate workplace incidents. However, Ox is now in place. Eric shall remain for many an hour.
Very good. Alright, now tiny bits. Several tiny bits that want to be mounted from this angle, before we then flip it around and mount the many, many more tiny bits that go on this side. Alternatively, I could adhere the gun shield. Think about this for a second. Let's see. After that's fitted into place, there's enough room that I could, like, sneak the gun in from behind it. No, I'll have to lay it down around the Swanson. Creating yet another window of opportunity for a moving part to fuse together in the process of being held down. Error. Whose bright idea was Sponson's? Also, yeah, like when I did kind of a quick gesturing around estimate demonstration of how far the field of fire was on this thing, that was without the shield that shows the actual limitations of how far this was allowed to traverse. You shoot to there, or you can shoot to there. What more would you need? Sponsors. One goes to the left, goes to the right. Don't worry, it's fine. Alright, and since that'll involve inverting the vehicle, I will save that until after I'm done with these bits. Fine jumping lady. anti-aircraft variant of the Lee, seen in flight. The Lee Interceptor. Review... of these handrails. In here. those, the handrail, and then in 4 fellows here are you yes you are one of the four yeah. these little fellows who go into notches along the back this ends up at another point on 
Yeah, the outer edge of this thing, there's a notch there. One of these caps goes into that. I have this little handrail to attach just above that hatch. The crew can make a big show, just kind of grabbing on and diving in there. And one more piece. Certainly one I would not want the crew to leave without. A tiny axe. For felling tiny trees. A lot of miscellaneous tools attached to the sides of most vehicles. Just in case the crew has to, you know, stop and clear blockage, wreckage. Engage in you know, any miscellaneous tool-having jobs. The crew or anyone they're working with, if you need an axe, a shovel. A big metal spike. Finest self-propelled hardware store. In the Allied Forces. These four go into this chain of spots here. M3 in the nest. No tank was a mistake. All tanks are beautiful. Mono gun, multi gun, all mounted, turreted, even sponsons. Fixed. Pivoting, coaxial, primary, secondary, all calibers.
Every vehicle has a place in the order of battle. System will recognize the new card. Always a risk when can performing tank graphs. Great care must be taken to find compatible donors. Oh, there's another bar I'm supposed to be attached to the back of this as well. Quite a few of those. Well, it's one that just fits in beyond the X, so that won't be too much of a problem. The X goes up there, other bar goes down there. Looks a bit... Let's be sure of this. There are many holes in the tank, and not many things to well, equally many things to put in. It has its rightful place. Play you on here. That's the one that lines up right. Very good. Some operators may notice that we've welded the utility axe to the side of the vehicle. You might ask, why did we do that? Don't. We've no time for foolish questions. There's a war on. Time spent axe wielding is time not spent driving your vehicle.
you didn't invest all this effort into creating this fine, cutting-edge fighting machines. You could use it to go frolic in the wilderness. Right, my hands are actually accumulating a decent amount of residual gunk. I'm gonna go quickly remove some of this to help make sure that uh, handling remains clean. It's effective and it's smooth. So we're back in a moment. And back. Gives things time to dry and settle anyway. All parts must be firmly cemented. A little handrail will bend over here. Tiny handrail. Alright, we'll see how well that holds up, and already I seem to be re -goat. Have you just started secreting new gunk? Fresh cut Lee, continuing to ooze. Probably just accidentally swiping against the undersides of parts that have connected all the receiving ends of all those uh, gaps in the back. easiest way to deal with this stuff when engaging in cleanup afterwards, at least for stuff that's gotten on you, is just to let it dry, since it will solidify into just a thin film of plastic and it does not bond with skin at all, so just kinda peeling it off. I also need bar number 29. Largely uninteresting bar.
Perhaps some sort of precisely engineered tanking bar. There remains a mystery. Perhaps we'll never know. I could probably look at the box art and get a decent idea of what it's trying to uh, depict with this piece. If I had strong feelings, I'd have you know, gone and crushed the handrail or a tiny sensitive piece. Early exists, you are... You are gonna be trouble. Our mast all over again. Handrails, antenna of the land. That whole region is off limits. No gripping anywhere in that zone. It's firmly grip free. And the mystery bar is over here. And to this layer. This may also just be a rail. For ease of climbing. Conveniently grippable M3 Lee. There you go, that's your home. Leaves sponsor. A cursed pesky thing. In a state where I can just flip you over and sit, it'll. Yes, none of the sensitive bits are facing over. Alright, so. Have this gun. Have this shield. And they must end up thusly merged. However, only the shield must fuse with the body of the tank. The sponsor must remain unharmed. A delicate procedure, be sure.
or everything's appropriately oriented. We go in for the shield. Pretty firmly attached. So another part I'm gonna need to regularly agitate just to be sure that it doesn't fine in any way. Yeah, look at that. Look at that beautiful range of motion. Got a whole 15 degrees. What more could you need? What? You, you think you can't point the gun at the enemy? Point the rest of the tank at the enemy. What are you, a coward? Where are you going if not forward to victory? Setting in well, and then this fender piece slides in underneath all of that and adheres to the upper hull. Right there under the gun. It combines appropriately. That I'll also have to be quite careful with that has to adhere to things that live near the gun, but not to the gun itself. That's a fender position. And I managed to carry out all of that without crushing the handrail again. It's still there. Live and well. Is 
throw a bit more cement in at the back to be sure that it gets its grip once and for all, and then I'll just be diligent about regularly wiggling the gun as we move on with the tasks. That's already gripping pretty firm there. I like its chances. Gonna do all right. Or a sponsor. So to move forward with this, there's some more plates to throw on in the uh, hindquarters there. And then a bunch more miscellaneous bits to latch on to the top. Sorts of bits and bobs, hatches and latches and handles and details. More field tools and so forth. Let's cut a couple of plates. Also go ahead and adjust the plate again. Be sure to maintain safe air quality at all times. When you have a lot of adhering going on in parallel, the fumes get really intense. All kinds of chemistry going on in there.
so many tiny fiddlers. That bit is two bits, it needs to be separated. The double bit. Yeah, Hearts has some good, relaxing, space-filling background music throughout its history. Fine track to have behind. Still methodical planning. Careful activity. Whether it's drawing map lines on map, drawing maps on a line, lines on maps, the wing, and plastic replicas of things together. Careful work, careful hands, careful tools. Onsen, you're acting a little gummy. Don't get gummy on me, Sponson. Living in a no-gum zone. There's no gummier than any of the wheels got during their gummiest points. I'd call this low risk. The model is establishing a firm grip on the piece, but mobility doesn't seem to be under threat. Hey, vigilant. Then any bonds that try to form are quickly shattered. On the back here, we have these pieces. There was. Bits. Come forward off the end of that. I got my upright on the corners like that. These will settle in underneath. The little bits and bobs go into various tiny forks that exist. That exist in front of work.
slight handedness to those ones. Bit of an angle to them. Fortunately, all these bits have been good about uh, enforcing each other's positions. Asymmetry. Correcting asymmetry. Yep, spawns is being me. Careful eye on it. Start figuring out how I'm gonna welcome this place. Bring it over for help. These have indents to rest into. Catch it there. Here. Here. To gum up on me, Sponson. I vouch for you. You're nothing without me, Sponson. Sponsor, I can end you. Maybe they just had more sponsors, yeah. A sponsor for each direction. As long as we get that full 360 degrees of coverage, who cares how we do it? Turrets are just one method, man. You can't, you can't monopolize.
about ends, not means. Sponsons within sponsons. What if, what if we mount a sponson on another sponson? Slowly convert the entire hull of the tank into a single continuous sponson. So if something gets within 100 meters, just hit it with the shovel. You can throw a shovel pretty far. Every tool is a weapon, and every weapon a tool. It's every part of the tank for victory. We built the shovel a hundred meters long, then you wouldn't have to throw it at all. Think of the leverage you'd get on that. You'd dig a mighty trench. First pair of additional plates. Position in the back. Looking fine and well. And the great thing about the, uh, when the glue starts to harden, it almost kind of looks like bad welding lines. Oh, hey, Tog. Fine and valiant battle steed that is. Oh yeah, things are starting to fuse and being prevented from fusing as suits the specifications. And when you lay that aside, everything that was done over there as well, we've uh, conducted. Well, that's backwards with respect to conducted a substantial degree of progress on the assembling of the tank. You can even like, see how those are going to fit together later as things move forward. So that's a fine block of progress and enough that even though I've done and cut off some more segments that belong at the back, I feel no particular shame or disappointment. Well, the Lee, beyond the, the, uh, the baseline that's inherent to the existence of the Lee, need to look upon and think about the Sponson. Uh, no particular shame and disappointment of calling this session a little shorter than the usual full length for a building time for reasons of air quality, despite the most intense and fortified efforts of the fan back there. The sheer magnitude of the gluing that's going on is causing a fair degree of fume to accumulate in the room, so I'm going to, uh... I'm keep babysitting the sponsor to be sure that it doesn't fuse to itself, but, uh, otherwise, it's gonna... ...appear to escape from the old adhesive swamp. And reach to a safe distance and otherwise open up the room more. There's yet more ventilation that's possible. Just not in a very stream-friendly way, so... I'm going to... crack up here, having... attached road wheel... I mean, you know, attached road wheels and sprockets... attached plates to the front and rear end... Of the hole and mounted the begun to the upper hole and adhered many miscellaneous bits and bobs and helpful tools all throughout. 
Hank! Give him the oil. Thank well. That's good. And moderate work. Nonsense. 